watercolour palettes. I want to show you which watercolour palettes are awesome and which ones not to waste your money on. I used to paint really big. I used to paint this kind of size all the time or a little bit like this one as well. So full sheets. It requires lots of paint. Big palettes that have lovely deep wells in them. I want to show you the ones especially not to waste your money on. I'm going to start with them and just finish with different palettes that have different types of qualities to them and most of them serve some sort of purpose except for this one I'm going to start with. This one just drove me nuts. Seemed like such a good idea because I was traveling to and from teaching everywhere and I wanted a palette that had uh, a lid on it. And this one seemed to be cool. You lift this up, which means that the palette stays in position. Okay, it's true that it didn't leak, not once, but the annoyance of the thing was, was huge. I was stunned at just how bloody often I thought, where is my color? What is wrong here? What, what am I, why? I've taught for quite a while and I have seen palettes that are a little worse. What I'm looking at here is cheap little daisy palette, daisy wheel, I think it's called, sitting in the center. And then I got a plastic plate. And if I turn it on this side, can you see those? If I turn it that way, yeah, you can see I dug out these dips in it and that's where the brush sat. So this was a pretty damn clever design as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but I got these plates randomly. Someone came for afternoon tea or, I don't know, dinner. I can't remember. The point is they brought these plates with them because they brought some food. It's this really, really solid plastic plate. So solid that you, I, could grind out these um, dips in it. Please ask down below how I did that. It's um, very simple, but you need a specific tool. Still remains a really good idea. However, it's got a plastic palette in the middle. Now that I work with ceramic, I'm gonna swap that out and put that there. That now becomes a brilliant idea too. So that was one of my early ideas. Couldn't keep it going because I couldn't get more of those. Plates, I have tried just plain old white trays it's just an old tray that um you know was used in entertaining but um plastic is just not ideal and this one had bits about it that were annoying the, the, the shape it just didn't work i used this one for quite a long time again i was traveling to go at back here that this stage i was traveling to go to art lessons so you know have lessons myself it's got a bottom tray where you put your paint i pretty much didn't do that because it only takes one size of tube and then in here pal palette lid palette circles this one um i really really enjoyed this for a very long time around this point though i discovered stephen quiller's color theory and that's all about having a circle and so i switched to circle palettes in the video i talked about large paintings this is the sort of palette that I used to use all the time. Lovely deep wells. I loved this palette. I absolutely loved it while I created big washes, big paintings. The other wonderful thing about it is that it limited me to six colors. And inadvertently, I started thinking about six colors and limiting my palette. And from pretty much then on, I worked out that a limited palette works so much better. The funny thing about it is that I was trying to get way more knowledge about color theory. And in that search for color theory, I realized I'd already been painting in a limited palette and oh, such a brilliant thing to do, have a limited palette. Now this one I did use for a while. It's a really good quality brand, Neef. So the plastic is really good quality. It's, it's still in perfect condition. I don't know why I didn't love it. I, it looks terrific. It's a great size, big wells. Um, you can put, lay the colors out in a lovely uh, fashion that would represent the color wheel. I, I, I was probably in my deep well phase where I needed a lot of color. I really, I, I don't have a good reason as to why I didn't um, love this one. These ones were only like $7 and they come with a top and a bottom. They're in the shape of a wheel. This was the precursor to this. This is the best palette um, that you could get. This is, the, if you're going to invest in one, just buy one really good 
ceramic one. They're so, so good. And if you're investing more energy, more thought processes into color theory, go for the wheel. It really helps you think about the relationships that colors have to each other. This plastic one is $7 and this is close to 30 or 30 something. It's hard to remember just how much I paid at the beginning, but you can see I've had multiples of these on the way. This was one that was the cheapest, but the best design of every cheap palette. And I mentioned that this wasn't every palette that I've ever tried. And that's because there were more of these cheap Daisy Well ones that I tried, but these, I'm sorry, I can't tell you what brand it is, but I can tell you if you're going to go for a cheap palette, get one that sits beautifully flat on the surface. Because if they don't fit flat on your surface, every time you put your paintbrush on the side near it, it wobbles a little bit, very annoying. So nice and flat surface on the bottom if you go plastic. I'm coming near to the end now. This you get if you buy core KO. Okay, <laughs> Q-O-R. This is a, um, the only brand of watercolour that doesn't use gum arabic as the binder. So I bought a set to see what it was like. It used to have <laughs> colours in there. But it comes with a very beautiful, handy lid as palette. This palette is another one that's good for travel, as in it keeps... Ugh. Right, and here's the... You can now instantly see the reason why I stopped using it every time I had a bit of paint run to the edges and it does all the time with this one because it's not sealed um, it's pretty close it's very good keeps everything intact but it's not sealed the advantage to this one is that you put a pen under there and oh, you get an instant an extra palette so when I used it it was pretty damn good so I used this one for quite a few years as well um, it's still full of all this colour, so I might take this one, plain air painting. <laughs> okay, this one, lovely, though that just hurt. Uh, great for oh, travel. Plastic, the lid comes completely off. You get this enormous area here for uh, a big palette. You can see I used it a lot. Um, the, uh, these wells were rather lovely um, and you can put your paints out in a nice colour wheel which is so helpful when you're painting so that was really good um, I'm trying to remember why it is I stopped did I want to go small or did I decide that ceramic was better it did bother me a bit a bit that this surface that the um, paint ah that's what I remember now this paint would ball up all the time when you um when you start mixing your paint on the palette. That was the reason for it. But for a long time, it did a really, really good job. I think that brand is Magello. I think the other small, I think this one's called Magello as well. Watercolor, I think it used to say some brand on it somewhere. Yep, there you go, on there, Magello. So these are both Magello. The quality is really good. It, you, I've just totally was happy with those. So in fact, as I'm going through it, you know, I haven't been that unhappy with many of them. It's been really interesting doing this. Now, this is going back to the very beginning of my art lessons. I have set out my paints in the order of the colour wheel and over here are included some mixed colours. I um, used this palette for a really, really long time. These mixing wells were very handy. There's some spare little wells that you could mix up an extra batch in. Um, this is starting to uh, fade. It is starting to crack. And as you can see from the lid, it wasn't ever a palette that sealed. You had to keep it perfectly flat. And as you can see, I many, many times somehow managed to uh, tip it over. So I'm going to turn that one over and put that down just it's called art basics so it was really great quality and at a pinch there's extra wells um, on the top of the lid if you wanted to and then those two wells down there I really really loved this I loved in fact being able to write uh, the names of the colors I was using onto it I found that really really satisfying I am leading very slowly up to the best palette that I've ever owned 
I mentioned this one was just absolutely wonderful. I love the weight. I love that it's ceramic. And I'm leading up to my best ever palette. And it's over here. This is the Stephen Quiller palette. It's uh, on that beautiful circle. Um, but you can put out every colour that you want to. His system is so brilliant that there's a big point and a big point and a big point for the three primaries. And he has, his colour theory is quite different to all of other colour theories in that he doesn't talk about the cool yellow, cool yellow and the warm yellow. He says there is a yellow and in fact he names a couple. So there are a couple of yellows and a couple of blues and a couple of reds that are pure. They're not cool, they're not warm, they're just pure. And I just fell in love with that theory from the moment that I understood that that was what he was um, suggesting. Colour wheels are all about theory. It's not colour science. The science is the light spectrum where the light sprays out and shows you those rainbow of colours. That's scientific. When you're talking about the palette, it's not science, it's theory. And that's why you can have a whole range of um, answers if you go searching for of investments in my art practice. So that one was one of the biggest and totally one of the best. I absolutely love the Quiller palette. Uh, so there you have it, my incredible range of palettes. So if you're interested in Stephen Quiller's theories or anything to do with colour theory, uh, this is the book that I read that um, changed the way that I think about colour theory. And um, I've done a review of that and I'll put a link um, below and at the end of the video so in case you're interested in, in having a little flick through of this book I don't really talk about his color theory I just give you a flick through this really beautiful book thanks for joining me guys see you next time bye